Okay, let's start talking about let's start talking about electrical charges and current. We're going to we won't have time since I was out on Friday, we won't have time to review magnetism, but that was a lot more recent. I know that there are still a lot of questions um, on electricity, even though that that one we finished up like eight weeks ago or something. Yes, ma'am. On the test floor, we get the equations. We haven't listened. Did you not get the equation? You did not take one of the equation sheets? We will print one out for you. Did you get those? Last week. I was still here on Friday. I think you were. I wasn't either. Thursday. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday or Thursday. I'll think about it. All right. the force between two particles held 0 0.250 meters apart if their charges are 5.5 microcoulombs and negative 3 microcoulombs. <laughs> I don't even know what okay, um, force is pretty straightforward one. We've got the equation. The force here is equal to our constant K times the product of the two charges involved over there radius squared, and then we've got our friend r hat, which is just a line between the two charges. That's all it is, and it's so, so it just Wait, describes we'll that. I, I will tell someone. Um, so, let's put in values. Nine, nine times 10 to the ninth newtons times meters squared, or just coulomb squared. Our two uh, charges, those are microcoulombs. We cannot calculate in microcoulombs. What's micro mean? 10 to the negative 6. 10 to the oh. negative 6. Oh. I'm going to move all of this over. Yeah? Can we write that on these little sheets? Yeah. You can write anything you want to on this. Both sides. Now we've got a negative 3.0 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Over the distance between them, and that has to be in meters. So one really common error that was on the last exam, the magnetism exam, was simply not um, putting the appropriate units in with things. So double check that and make sure that you do that each time because you should be able to cross out units in these and if we're looking for a force what unit are we supposed to end up with <laughs> newtons make sure that you do so if you've got coulombs over here you know you're going to need coulombs over here to cross them out this is per coulomb so we need coulombs on top micro coulombs won't cut it I get 2.37 newtons. Well, it'll be 
Yes, two sig figs, thank you. I don't need those. What direction? And because actually this is tech, this would have come out as a negative. What direction does that mean? It's not left. No, it'd be So so remember, so this is up here, it's R hat. What's the negative R hat direction mean? What do a positive and negative charge do to one another? They attract. So if they're attracting, what direction would, how could you describe this direction? Together. 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 Toward each other. Yep. Yeah. You could, you know, so it, depending on what it's, how it's stated, this would be an okay way, but this would be an attractive force. That's what negative R hat means. Positive means they're going away from each other on the line okay. that connects their t the two of them. Just Negative means that they're coming together. Just one more time, can you say what R hat means? It's, it's the line connecting the two points. So here, what about the line? here's point one, here's point two, there's our hat. Here's point one, there's point two, there's our hat. It is the line in between them. That is all. What does it mean? Like, how does it change your answer at all? It means it's, it's either, they're either pushing away from each other or attracting toward each other. The line gets smaller or bigger? You don't need, in this sense, you don't need to know where they lie on the two planes to say that they're either attractive or repulsive. Yeah, this isn't, oh. um, if they were, if you had x and y coordinates, then you could tell exactly what angle it was and everything. But don't need that. Okay. Um, I'm green. It's not easy being green. constant 10 newtons per coulomb in the positive x direction what force does it experience easy peasy because how is force related to electric field let's make this really easy it's newtons per coulomb all we have to do is multiply by the amount value of the charge so we have 10 newtons per coulomb. And if you wanted to include direction here, you do a little x hat, which just indicates that it's in the, uh, I don't care. It just indicates that it's in the x direction. And then the charge. How come it's not negative? Because it's in the positive x direction. Yeah. But it's an electron. Thank you. I didn't know. I didn't know what you were talking about. I was still on the X hat. Got him. Oh God. So what direction is that? Negative X direction. Negative X direction. Let's do one next that gave a lot of people trouble on the test the first time through. Okay. Um, as we point out with a couple people in class, don't, this is not that hard, so don't make it hard. If we want a difference between two points, that would be like a, a delta, right? So we'd have to take V2 minus V1. 
Well, this started very far away, and that would be V1, and it got to a place 0.1 meter away. That would be V2, where it ended up. So all we have to do is K times Q over R2 minus K Q over R1. Well, we're, if this is very, very far away, for all intents and purposes, where is it? At infinity. What is something divided by infinity? Zero. We know exactly what it is. Remember, there's no such thing as infinity in real life. The, the universe is not infinite, so you can't have a distance that's infinite. So it's just getting closer and closer to zero. So whole bunch of zero point, whole bunch of zeros, something way out there that we don't care about. So all we need is this part. Okay. Yeah. 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 Times the charge, 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, and divided by our distance, 0.1 meter. I got it. I do have the negative now at this time on the charge. Uh, yeah. So I get negative 8.9.0 times 10 to the 4. And units here, I cross out one of my meters, one of my coulombs. Yes, Chris. Okay, so an electron usually has a charge of. Sure does. So how do you know what is causing the electric field through which the electron is moving? That's that point charge. So the point charge is the point charge here is not really moving. We're moving an electron around it, and that electron will experience force and potential difference because of this charge. Yes, ma'am. So the V is voltage? V is voltage. So the voltage of something compared to something like infinity? It's, al it's always compared, yeah. It's always compared to some other place. So a battery, a 1.5 volt battery, it's 1.5 volts difference between the two sides of the battery, not between this side of the battery and someplace else. It's always just marked between the two. Follow-up question here. How much work is done on the electron I wasn't looking at this by the electric field. So as you move, <coughs> how how much work is done on the electron? What's that? I didn't get that number. Okay. I'll try to Did you make it negative? I'll let you decide for this time. Yes, for it started extremely far away. So there is a distinction to make on this. Um, I am not going to try and trick you in any way on, in, on the test about which one is which. The, dis, the distinction is a positive or negative sign. The way I worded this, how much work is done on the electron by the electric field, is actually negative 1 times the work done on a charged particle in this. Do not worry about that, though. I won't, I won't make that distinction. If you've got an electron which is negative, though, and you're trying to move it closer to a negative charge, you're going to have to do work on it. So the way that it's written here, with work is equal to charge times the voltage, this is actually work done by an external force. This is like lifting something up. You would have to do positive work to lift it. Gra the force of gravity does negative work on it. Same kind of idea here. But I'm not going to try and trick you with any of those and give you, well, it could be positive or, mine or negative, and you have to figure out which one. 
So we're really only would only be working on the value of this. The value of it, our charge, is the electron being moved from one point to another. So we know the charge on that. And we just figured out how much uh, the change in voltage is. So to begin with, the, the number value here, we just have to multiply those. And I'm taking the unrounded one from before. So if you're using 9.0, it could be a, it'll be a little different than what I'm seeing, what I'm doing here. So 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4. What units? How do you how do you know? Because it's work. Okay, so we'd expect joules. What's a volt? <coughs> Joule per coulomb. So if we take coulombs and multiply by joules per coulomb, we get joules out. Exactly. So now we're going to switch quick over to a couple of circuit uh, problems. Voltage is still used here. Um, you, that's always measuring the change in potential that a charge will have from one point to another, which is like this. So as it goes through the circuit, it's losing that much energy. So let's say that you've got a circuit. with a 9 volt battery and a 6 ohm light bulb. How much current will flow through the light bulb? This one, almost 1.5 amps. 1.5 amps. This is a, an Ohm's law, right? V equals I times R. We want to find current, which is abbreviated I. So we've got 9 volts over 6 ohms. And that gives us 1.5 amps. Um, we had a quick question uh, clarifying what what is a series? What is a parallel circuit? Series, remember, it means a single direction for a current to flow. What is, what is a symbol? Power source. Power source. Battery. DC power source. What's the difference between DC and AC, anyway? Okay, but what is the difference? Direct current goes one way. Alternating current can go both ways. Actually, not both. It, 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 yeah, it's well. It goes back and forth, sort of. So it, it alternates between back and you know one way and the other. So sir, series circuit looks like this. What are these guys? Resistors. They'd have some light bulb. Light light bulb is like this. Um, a parallel circuit will have multiple branches that. Okay, electrons can go through. And I apologize for anyone watching. My battery is low, so it might just go out. Yeah. Um, important things about this. What can you tell me about the voltage in a series circuit? It is not constant throughout. What's that? Say that again. Total voltage is the same as the source. Total voltage, so the voltage drop here plus here plus here will be the same as the battery. Yep, electrons have to lose that energy going all the way around. Um, and that implies that it could be different. And it will be different depending on the resistance. What can you tell me about the current? Same. Same, same everywhere. One electron leaving has to go through all the parts. And what about total resistance? Add up. Add them up, one after another. What can you tell me about voltage in a parallel circuit? Same. 
Same on all branches. And Troy's on the ball. What can you tell me about the current? The in current drops. Drops. It drops. Changes. It's Give me more. It's not the same. It's not the same. Based on the resistance. Based on the resistance of each branch. So each has the same voltage. We use Ohm's law just like above to find the current in each one. Add them up to find the total current coming out of the battery. What do we know about the total resistance in this kind of circuit? Yeah, it's, it's a reciprocal thing. What what general rule do we know? So if I give you a five ohms, ten ohms, five ohms, what can you tell me about the resistance of that circuit? Five ohms will be the same. Nope. Oh, over twenty. Nope. Ah, uh, could be. I don't know. Yes, and then you do the reciprocal. What I'm looking for, though, is it's always going to be less than any of these branches. We know it's going to be less than 5 ohms. It's actually going to be somewhere like around 2-ish. Uh, let's do one together and figure out the total <coughs> resistance that the battery would see. <coughs> like so. We'll do 15 ohms. We'll just do 15 ohms for all of them. <laughs> Let's do this one quickly since we're running out of time. I would group these last two that are in series. I always start on the right and then just add back in the simple way. So if I added those two up, which are in series, they make a single 30 ohm. So that would be equivalent to this. Now these two that are on the end, I'd add up, but they're in parallel. So I'd have to add them up, I'll say a 1 over R E for equivalent, 1 over 15 ohms plus 1 over 30 ohms. So that'd be 3 over 30 or 1 over 10. So that'd be 3.33. That doesn't sound right, is it? Over 15 plus over 30 is over 10. Okay. Oh. So it's 10. I don't know why I did. Yeah. It's Never mind. Left. I was keeping the 3 and, the, and putting the 10 in. Okay. Well, those are easy. They're, you, they're in series, so you just add them. So that whole thing simplifies, as far as the battery is concerned, to a 25 ohm resistor. And in that way, if we, fit, if we wanted to figure out, well, this is a 10, ohm, 10 volt battery, then we could figure out what the voltage is. But on the final, you're not, I'm not going to expect you to do a ton of these. Yes, Yep. Did you get the 10 ohm from the 15 to 